Manganet Power Station is a coal-fired power station. It's about 40 years old. It produces over 2,000 megawatts of power. And to put that into context, it will produce enough power to feed a third of Scotland's demand. Of course, we're interconnected to England and Wales, so some of that power goes south as well. Uh, I have 270 staff, and we're supported by another 100 or so contractors, and that really makes up the team. But of course, at this moment in time, we're investing for the future to make the plant as green as it possibly can be. Well, along Gannett, there's been significant investment in emissions reduction uh, technology uh, here. Uh, first and foremost, we fitted Lonox burners uh, some time ago. Uh, we have fitted a boosted over fire air system, again for reducing uh, NOx. We're uh, in the throes of uh, designing a selective catalytic reduction plant, again for reducing uh, NOx. Uh, we have recently installed a flue gas desilverisation plant here, uh, which is, uh, removes the sulphur dioxide from the flue gases. And really the next step is to uh, tackle the, the issue of carbon dioxide emissions. When you burn coal at Longana or anywhere else, you produce emissions to air and effectively they split into uh, three traditional emissions. One is dust or particulate matter from the chimney. When you look at Longana's chimney, you'll see very little of anything coming out of it and that's because we've invested in what's called electrostatic precipitators. They effectively, they stick all the particles of dust and they remove them before the emissions leave the chimney. The second pollutant is uh, oxides of sulphur or sulphur dioxide. We burn low sulphur coal but as an addition, we've spent several hundreds of millions of pounds fitting FGD, flue gas desulphurisation, which strips out over 90% of the sulphur from the emission. The third pollutant are, is oxides of nitrogen, and that is related to uh, ozone and uh, greenhouse gases as well. The oxides of nitrogen are really controlled through special burners, a bit like a carburetor in your car, so very, very um, special injection processes to control the combustion. And on top of that, we've now got a technology called Boosted Over Fire Air, BOFA for short. And effectively, that's another level of carburation, to use the analogy of the car, which makes the engine burn a lot cleaner. So I've covered the three traditional components, dust, SO2 and NOx. But the fourth is carbon, and carbon dioxide is really the kind of holy grail of emissions. We have to capture the carbon for coal to have a successful future. If we don't solve the carbon question, really, coal's doomed. Uh, not just in this country but really globally. So carbon dioxide uh, is really the final pollutant that we're trying to tackle and that's where the mobile test unit comes in, the carbon capture unit comes in. Getting the, the chemistry sorted will allow us to capture the carbon and then getting the storage sorted will allow us to store it uh, in a suitable repository under sea. Carbon capture actually uh, presents the flue gas to a, to a, to a big chemical plant uh, and within that chemical plant there are, there are special chemicals called amines which uh, attract the CO2, and in attracting the CO2, it reduces the overall uh, carbon dioxide emissions up the chimney. That CO2 can then be released from the special chemical, uh, it can then be compressed and sent by pipeline or ship to, uh, to storage in the central North Sea, where it's buried deep underground. Longana is ideally situated in, in terms of its uh, ease of access to the, the central North Sea. Uh, we've got a power plant on the right side of the country, We've got a, a, a pipe infrastructure that leads up to the, 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 the top of Scotland and then potentially out to, the, uh, out to the central North Sea. And we're also situated on a, on a, on a, a large river and uh, with the potential there to ship CO2 out again to the central North Sea uh, as appropriate. The main thing is the excitement of being involved in a cutting edge project, but we've had to support the uh, installation of the mobile test unit and, and prepare for that support the training and development of certain uh, key staff, get, get them ready for, for the new technology. But going forward, uh, once we prove the technology and we start to do this at a commercial scale, then I'll have to think about the full operations and maintenance activity that goes on here and how we integrate it seamlessly into the running of the plant. It's extremely exciting, yes. Uh, you know, for uh, myself as the, the Clean Coal Integration Manager, but staff at Longanet uh, as well, obviously uh, carbon uh, dioxide, CO2 capture uh, and storage, uh, that will extend the life of Longanet. So particularly for the younger uh, members of staff here, you know, the, the, the future does look good at Longanet uh, long in terms of a uh, long-term security of employment.
Long Annet is in my, my constituency of Mid Scotland and Fife. It's a, a workplace, it's an institution that I've known for a, a great number of years. Um, there has been some doubt over, over its long term future, so I was pleased to hear of Scottish Power's plans to, to bring forward carbon capture and storage at Long Annet. I'm ex I think the proposals are, are very exciting, and hopefully, uh, if it's successful, we'll give Long Annet that, that long term future that it deserves.